the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. To call out to a God who as near and close to us as a parent, as a parent who cares and loves their children, a parent who is able to say, this is my son, this is my daughter, with whom I am well pleased. But yet also a God who is set apart in God's holiness, who reigns in heaven, a God who is as close to us as that God is beyond us. And thank goodness, because for the trials we face, we need someone who is more than, who is greater than, who is beyond us. And we pray together for it to be God's kingdom that comes, the very center of this prayer. That the will of God is done on earth as it is in heaven. That that future reality of Christ's return and the establishment of God's justice, God's peace and righteousness, God's loving kindness and wholeness for all people for all time is something that we do everything we can to live in a present reality where there's still evil and spiritual forces of wickedness that are very much present. And in order to be able to fulfill that tall of a calling, we get a little bit more of that beyondness of God when we gather around the table as God gives us our daily bread, as God gives us God's very presence to live within us, to give us the power and the strength that we need to continue that work of God's kingdom coming and God's will being done. But then there's this pesky forgiveness bit that comes right after we get filled with God's power within us that, dang it, once again, we are called to the table as well. So that when God gives us God's power, we have created more room inside ourselves for it to take root and for it to be at work. We are a partner people. This is covenant that God promises to be there that we will never be alone. But also that we are needed to be in this. That we decide how much room we give God to work, to bring God's kingdom. And that's why we go forward into Lent as a time of spiritual discipline, because as we train our bodies, we've got to train our spirits so that there's more and more room that God has to work with, so that there's more and more strength, so that there's more and more possibility of God's kingdom coming and God's will being done. When we talked about that sermon on God's kingdom and I was talking about um, pairing together righteousness and mercy, right? How there needs to be a line drawn, right? Where we stand against the spiritual forces of wickedness and powers of evil, but that also that there is mercy um, in that just as God has given us mercy so that we as a church try to avoid the two extremes of righteousness only, which basically ends up being a checklist of grumpy legalism, or mercy only, which then just ends up in wishy-washy sentimentality that doesn't really mean much of anything, and how we bring those together. And right after that sermon, Anne came up and was like, hey, yes, righteousness and mercy, but what about forgiveness? So Anne, here's your sermon. Um, and so this forgiveness, right, is the bridge between the two. When we stray too far to one end or the other, forgiveness, God's forgiveness and our forgiveness of each other is what keeps us in relationship, what keeps us in the game, what keeps us on the field and trying. 
because we're not going to catch every pass, although there are some pretty amazing moments of that last year of, you know, a pass that was caught. Um, but okay, all right, fine. But we're not always going to catch them. And so what are the points where we can have that forgiveness that instead of that being the end of the game, creates a way for us to continue and to stay in it because there is something that is at stake that is beyond us. But oh my gosh, this is, at least for me, one of the hardest things that I've encountered because forgiveness has to come before there's an apology. When in a situation, you know an apology is never going to come or even see that it's needed. When there's no hope of reconciliation, when there is no way forward. Forgiveness isn't the response to possibility already coming of resolution. Forgiveness is what we do for our own soul care. Forgiveness is what we give to God so that God can work in us. Forgiveness is us removing the log from our own eye before we remove the splinter from another. Forgiveness is us knowing that the only person we have any control over is ourselves. Forgiveness is wanting those tapes that play over and over and over again of what someone else did to us or what exactly we're going to do to them to make the score even. Forgiveness is stopping those tapes and making room for something else. Forgiveness is life. Forgiveness is wholeness. Forgiveness is the chance to take our anger and our reaction of something that is legitimately wrong and legitimately an injustice and place it in God's hands. Forgiveness doesn't mean we have to say there was no wrong done to us. Forgiveness doesn't mean that we say and tap down how hurt we were and, and say that that doesn't matter and just reject those feelings or deny them or sweep them away. Forgiveness is saying, yes, there was a wrong. Yes, I have a right to be hurt. I have a right to be angry because it's a sign that something was wrong. But I also choose for that not to be what defines me. And I also choose for that not to be the main driving force of my life. And I also choose to see beyond this particular moment. And that's where we remember the grace and the forgiveness that has been given us. We remember how relieved we are to know that we are greater than our worst mistake, than our worst day, than our worst sin. And so it's space that wants that relief for another. To see them as more than that moment when they hurt us. To see them as more than the huge, massive pink elephant um, that everyone's trying to ignore in the room, but is just there pooping away. And so how do we get beyond that to remember that there's more in all of us and that we serve a God who sent his only son to die for us? Not after we had apologized, not after we had seen the harm that we were doing, but while we were yet sinning, while we were still doing the harm, while we were still sinning. That is the forgiveness that can change everything. 
That is the forgiveness that can sand away the bitterness that comes with being wronged and being harmed. That is the kind of forgiveness that can make a way where there is no way. That is the kind of space and moment where God's kingdom can come and God's will can be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because we're not alone. God is with us. And there are others who are with us too. In the blazing light, your cross reveals the truth we dimly knew. What trivial debts are owed to us, how great our debt to you. So Lord, cleanse the depth within our souls and bid resentment cease. Then bound to all in bonds of love, our lives will spread your peace. While I was preparing for this sermon, I all of a sudden started thinking about that moment when Jesus is walking on water and calls to Peter to get out to do the same. That promise from the passage of Isaiah that when you walk through the waters, they will not overwhelm you. All of a sudden, I've been seeing that in a new light. Forgiveness is what enables us to walk on water. Forgiveness is what enables us to be light even in the midst of really, really hard, evil things. Jesus' hand that reaches out saves us from sinking down into those waves and that water because, friends, if anything life promises us, it's that we will be hurt and we will be wronged. So the question is, will we let ourselves drown in that? Or will we take Christ's hand and will we walk on water?